Is it cruel to circumcise babies on religious grounds? Well, the court in Germany believes so and said that it amounts to bodily harm. Do you agree with that court in Germany? Certainly a lot of people on my Twitter feed agree. Greg has said yes, absolutely. Gurdip has said yes, it's cruel and should be banned. I see no need unless on medical grounds. We've stopped docking dogs' tails. Neil Patel has said, with the, I'm with the Germans. It's the most ludicrous practice. It has absolutely no bearing on health or entering the kingdom of heaven. Dr Peter Ball, who is vice chairman of Norm UK, which is the National Organisation of Restoring Men, would agree with the people who have tweeted me. Um, Dr Ball, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, why are you so against this practice? Uh, because it's a, an offence against the Convention of Human Rights. A child cannot give informed consent. And we believe very strongly that all children, regardless of sex, even intersex, and regardless of their ethnic origins or religion, should be protected from any non therapeutic, any unnecessary surgery to their genitals. Right, well what effect does it have on a man in later life? Because of course there are hundreds of millions of men walking around the planet Earth who were circumcised. Men who have been intact, in other words, enabled to enjoy their foreskins and have then been circumcised, report that the difference in sensation is there's a difference between watching colour and black and white television. But but if you but it's sorry, Doctor Paul. But if it happens to you as a baby, you would never know the difference, would you? Uh, you wouldn't know the difference exactly. But uh, the foreskin is an important part of the penis. It's not just a useless flap of skin. It's important to uh, to protect the glands. That's the head of the penis, which is an internal organ. It protects it from feces and all the things inside a nappy, and in later life, it in enables the full enjoyment of sex to occur. It enables the rolling action of the skin to and fro over the head of the penis. So there are no health benefits to circumcision? Not uh, when weighed against the, the, com the potential complications and disadvantages. Well, 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 then what are the health benefits of circumcision then? Uh, it's, it's said that it's cleaner, which is a commonly trotted out reason for doing it. And this is no sillier than saying um, that uh, it, uh, you, you can keep your teeth clean by uh, using a toothbrush. And uh, as long as you've got water available, then you can clean your foreskin. So that's not a good reason. OK. All right. Um Let's speak to Adnan Rashid. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Stay with us. Uh, Adnan Rashid is an imam. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Hi. How are you, Nihal? Thank uh, you so much for inviting me again. Always a pleasure. Um, you've heard what Dr. Paul has to say. Right. What would your justification for circumcision be? Well, my justification primarily as a Muslim is on religious grounds. Uh, it is uh, the sunnah of the Prophet, the way of the Prophet. He recommended that uh, children be circumcised, uh, male children. This would be for health reasons, would it, originally? Well, everything we believe in Islam has a wisdom behind it. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so what do you think the wisdom why, was? The, the reason why we, we obey the commandments of God uh, are uh, connected to natural uh, realities. Yes, but so what, what, what do you think the wisdom was behind it? Well, Why did the prophet, in his wisdom, say that this should be done? If you want to speak in medical terms, of course I can't speak with the credentials of the doctor, but I strongly disagree with the, uh, his statement. No, 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 but you, you, you must, you know, you must, in the spirit of knowledge and seeking sure. knowledge, yes. the prophet is not just going to say he was clearly a very wise man. He's not just going to say something for the sake sure. of it, is he? Sure. He must have had his reasons. So what do you think, as an imam, those reasons were? Well, well let me actually narrate the, the, the quote from the Prophet, which clearly states that there are five things which are from nature. Clipping the nails, circumcising uh, male children, uh, removing, removing pubic hair, remo removing hair from armpits, and uh, there was another fifth... Uh, mm, 
element he mentioned. Yes, that's still not, answer. you're still not answering the question, though. I, I'm, I'm coming to the answer. Okay. Give me, the, give me a chance. The wisdom behind circumcision is, uh, of course, if speaking in medical terms, uh, is to protect the child from uh, many harms. For example, m uh, recent medical re research has uh, proven that uh, children are less likely to in, uh, to get infected or get have have urinary in, uh, tract infections. This is a very very well established fact among medical practitioners. This is well known among doctors and pediatricians that children who are circumcised are less likely to contract that infection. This is one thing. Second, uh, it has been proven uh, through medical research that. People who are circumcised are less likely to contract HIV virus. It's not a protection. It's not a source of protection. But people who have been circumcised are less likely, uh, likely to contract the virus. Okay. Then it, it protects from phimosis. Uh, uh, for example, uh, um, b inability to retract foreskin. I mean, I, I want to be lunch friendly as well, now, if, yes. you, if, you, yes. if you like. So I don't want to go into the details. So there are many things. Uh, okay, let's example, let, let, let me stop you there then, because let's let, let's bring yes. let's bring Doctor Bull back in at this point. Doctor Bull, okay. Adnan Rashid, our Imam, who, by his own admission, is not a medical doctor. He has outlined medical research. He's quoted that has said the benefits of circumcision. Would you like to question? Certainly, um, his first comment about uh, the um, occurrence of urinary infection among male babies. That is certainly true. There is a higher figure for male babies as opposed to um, females. And um, it is, though, such a small uh, risk of infection that you'd have to uh, circumcise about 100 or, or more babies simply to reduce the chance of a urinary infection in, in the remaining baby, which would be um, absurd. And the infections that do occur can be easily treated with antibiotics. Right. So, so wait a minute. Just, just to be very clear here, mm -hmm. circumcision would lead to a child being less likely to get a urinary infection. Uh, it, uh, yes. It would, it would. Reduce the chance. Right. It would of, reduce of, chance. Of very few children getting the urinary infection. Okay, but, but, but nevertheless, nevertheless, there is, a, there is a wisdom in that. Okay, what about the other point about HIV? HIV, that also has been suggested that it does make you less likely to catch HIV. Uh, HIV. Comprehensively proven or suggested? Well, the, the, the trials um, which are always quoted uh, were, were not truly um, double-blind trials. They, they, they um, didn't have a chance to do um, a comparable series uh, on, on people who weren't at risk. And um, fair enough, if uh, an adult decides that that's the way he'd like to reduce his chance of HIV, then that's all right. But uh, one of the disadvantages of this advice is that so many people, having been circumcised, then think that they're then immune, whereas they still, in fact, ought to use a sheath if they're going to protect themselves. Mm. Against HIV and okay, yes, because of course it would not be correct medical advice to say if you are circumcised you don't need to wear a condom that's to right. prevent but your self this is what a lot of people end up thinking. Mm. So that's a they slightly dangerous advice. Later on when people say, well, I have been circumcised and look, I've gone and got HIV. Mm. And there's going to be quite a backlash. I right. Think. OK. Now, um, Anand Rashid, and I've got Naz waiting on the line, so Naz, we'll come to you in a little bit. Um, and Rashid, according to the BBC website uh, section on Islam and Islamic ethics and male circumcision, it says, in the Sunnah, Muhammad stated that circumcision was a law for men and a preservation of honour for women. Would that be true? No, he didn't state that. This is... Uh, uh uh, statement attributed to the Prophet, which cannot be authenticated. No. I, um, according to my research, Prophet never uttered this statement. No. It is um, a statement possibly uttered by a, a scholar of Islam, but not by the Prophet. No. Right, okay, but but he did talk about male circumcision, but, Absolutely. You, but as far as female circumcision is called, which is, of course, also called female genital mutilation, 
and is mm -hmm. I illegal in, in many parts of the world. Um, sure. Y you wouldn't attest that to, to the profit? No, female genital mutilation is absolutely uh, forbidden in Islam if it is mutilation. However, uh, what can be attributed to the prophet is to removal a slight uh, uh, um, from uh, he made it very clear that when you carry out female circumcision which was cultural at the time you know there were people who used to do it culturally it was an Arab practice right but, 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 but wait a minute wait a minute but the point is mm -hmm. so you would endorse a type of female circumcision would you no, I wouldn't endorse. It's not endorsed in Islam at all. It's not but, but you've just said that the Prophet himself, and then you went on to explain no, he, he that it was a cultural practice at the careful. time. If, if you have to do it, he said, if you have to do it, you be careful and make sure that you remove as less as possible. That's what he said. If you have to do it. He never said you go and do it. No. Right, OK. Whereas he was very clear that you have to... Well, actually, it's not compulsory necessarily. It's preferable rather than compulsory, isn't it? Male circumcision. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, that's the view I follow. Yeah, that's correct. That it's preferable, not compulsory. Not compulsory, no. Yes, that's correct. Why is it that you do not allow someone to make their own mind up about this, as opposed to well, doing it to a child? This, again, comes back to the wisdom of God. I mean, we because we believe in God, that he exists, and he's the supreme authority. He's the one who dictates as to what happens in uh, a person's life, if a person believes in God. And if you believe in God, then you have to obey his commandments. This is, this is how it is, and uh, this is why I believe our view is consistent. And prophet is from God, and he told us to circumcise our children. And we can now see today through medical research that there is a lot of wisdom behind circumcising children from hygiene, from protecting them from HIV, from... Preventing you have to be very careful with the HIV, as Dr. Ball pointed out. What you don't want people thinking, is it, is that because they're circumcised, that they wouldn't have to wear a condom. I when when, pe clear. when medical science says it's the condom that's I'm probably the best defence against HIV. Sure, I made it very clear that this is not a protection, this is not a source of protection. Rather, it reduces the risk by 39 to 66%. 39 to 66%? That's correct. That's, that's quite a gap. Uh, you know, 39 to 6, it reduces the chance. Right, oh, I see a what you big mean. Gap. This is why some of the African governments, I was recently in Africa about a month ago, and I was told that governments are actually promoting uh, even Christian men to be circumcised in order to prevent HIV virus, even though condoms are available in, in Africa, uh, but people are still contracting the virus. And one of the biggest uh, um, preventions they can see or they can uh, assume is that they can uh, have men uh, circumcise themselves okay. and they can prevent the virus from spreading to some, some extent. OK, all right, let's just leave it there for a second, uh, Imam Rashid. Uh, Naz, good afternoon. Hello. Hello, Hello Naz. Um, is it cruel? The German uh, court seems to think that it is actual bodily harm. Um, no, I don't think it's cruel. Um, you know, because, I mean, I'm a Muslim myself, my, both my sons got circumcised and then my two grandsons got circumcised. And then, well, Why did you, know, you do it, Naz, when it's not compulsory? You're not well, told you have to do it. It was compulsory, I'm sorry. I just thought it was, I mean, this is new to me, I just thought from our parents and our grandparents that it's, Gunnar, if we don't get it... OK, done, well, well, let's ask Adnan Rashid that. Adnan Rashid, I think Naz needs some clarification on this. It, right. She thought it was compulsory. Well, this view does exist, and it's a minor view. Uh, it does it's a minor view, is it? It's, 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 it's a view among a minority of scholars, and it's a valid view. They have their reasons to assert this. However, the majority view is that it is a sunnah. Sunnah it literally means the way of the Prophet. Sunnah can be uh, if they... from prayers to other things, and this is part of the sunnah because he recommended it in a, pr in a report very clearly. If, so, Adnan, Adnan, if it was yeah. done for the reasons of hygiene, and the five that you mentioned, you know, the fingernails, etc., the bodily hair, in Arabia at the time, that would make absolute sense, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, hygiene is very, very important because it preserves uh, the body, it helps you to be healthy. No, if, it didn't if... make sense. 
at all. Uh, in fact, he had to even uh, stress on the point of brushing one's teeth. For example, he said, "If no, no, no." But my no, my point, no, my point being is though, is that in his wisdom, he saw that people were going around and they were dirty, and there was no need for it because the, through simple actions, they could not be, they could keep themselves clean, and that's very wise that he did that. But in 2012, where we have regular showers, which of course you didn't have at the time, you can keep yourself clean downstairs, as it were, because we're being lunchtime friendly, without having well, to remove any skin, couldn't you? Well, I've, I've, I've seen people with uh, very... Yeah, OK, we don't need to talk about that. But I mean, that that's because they're, they're unhygienic people, presumably. Yes. Sure, yeah, sure. but you well, see, but there isn't anything that in the twenty first century or in the seventh century, the rules. No, 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 the, the, no, no, no. The, the time changes, Adnan, doesn't it? Things evolve. Sure. We have showers. You didn't have showers then. You didn't. In fact, you didn't have that much water if you were living a nomadic existence in the desert. But sure. if you are, but this is why. This is one of the reasons why I believe that Islam is a very progressive religion. Islam gave regulations and rules to us. 14 centuries ago, which can be applied... But if it's progressive... ...and are effective but, but, to change our situation for the better. But if it's as progressive as you believe it to be, Adnan, then surely it would state you don't need to do this now because you have showers, you have running water, people can clean themselves. You don't have to surgically remove something that is attached to a human body that God created in its okay. entirety. You don't have to do that anymore. So, so, so that surely would be a progressive point of view, wouldn't it? Absolutely, I agree. If that's true, uh, however, in the case of cir 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 circumcision, that's not that's not what the reality is. Because uh, again, I don't. I want to be lunch friendly, and I don't want to go into grim details. But foreskin can definitely be very harmful if it's not cleaned properly. And most yes, people, but, unfortunately, yeah. most people, this is the reality we're facing. Most people don't actually bother to clean their foreskins, having been to the okay, toilet. Okay. And, okay. And this is one of the reasons to prevent from more Yes, but but but, but wait, Adnan, Adnan, the world is not the world um, who is not circumcised are not queuing up at doctor's surgeries with urinary infections, are they? That's a fair, that's a fair point. However, at the same time, they all, if you look at the, the percentage, the statistics of people who contract STD or sexually transmitted diseases, majority, I mean, in, in, in people, uh, in the case of people who are circumcised, the, the numbers are much, much, much lower, considerably lo lower, and this is a fact. This is not what I'm saying from my own mind, and I'm making things up. If you go on the net, do simple research on this issue, STD has a lot to do with people who are not circumcised. Dr. Uh, Dr. Ball, just, just quickly, Dr. Ball, uh, you are the, uh, the, the, the medical practitioner in all this. Would you agree with Adnan's points? Um, no, no. About I STIs? It STDs. is that the important thing is that we shouldn't be prejudging the children that they're going to be licentious and open to uh, sexual infections in the first place. Where, where, oh, it's where prevention, it's, isn't it? That you've got to be circumcised. Pre prevention is always better, isn't it? Is, is not uh, just on, on any child. But don't you always argue in the medical profession that prevention is better than cure? And that prevention is what Adnan Rashid is, is talking about? And the, the examples that he's given so far, you've agreed with? Uh, it's it's um, uh, saying prevention is better than cure is as, uh, as absurd as saying uh, if if you since you can get cancer of the breast it, you would prevent it by taking the breasts off in infancy um, and I think the circumcision in order to um, lessen the chance of but the acquiring the venereal disease but that's, is abs chance but that's absurd because of course the breasts are very very important. Uh, in child rearing, whereas the foreskin, what purpose does it serve? If so many people can walk around the planet Earth without one, then what purpose does it serve? Uh, so it's an absurd comparison for you to make, surely. I don't think so. The foreskin has, uh, as I've mentioned already, has a very valuable function um, in protection in early days and in contributing to a more satisfactory sexual life uh, in adulthood. Right, OK. Well, 
Okay, Dr. Ball, thank you very much indeed for that. Naz, thank you as well. Um, on the uh, email, hi Nihal, I think that circumcision is a healthy practice. It has been scientifically proven to decrease the risk of infections. We should keep it. Uh, Hamraz from Dewsbury said it's not cruelty if the baby is up to three months as baby doesn't know about the pain and will not remember. Uh, it certainly does know about the pain. It may not remember it, but it certainly does. Um, that's if it's a professional circumciser, like a doctor. If done after a year, then it's cruelty, as baby is a bit more intelligent and may remember it later. If done at four to six, then it's not advisable as child or intelligent or remember it for the rest of their life. That's my opinion. That's from Hamraz. On our Facebook page, it said, Why did God produce a boy with a foreskin for it to be removed? Hard ever said, Hasn't circumcision been carried out for millennia without problems? Whereas Sonny has said, Circumcision damages a boy for life. If that kid decides not to follow his parents' religion, he's scarred for life, having had an irreversible procedure you done. It's wrong and inhumane. 08459 440445 is the phone number. What do you think of infant circumcision? What do you think? Whether you think it is cruel, whether you think it's barbaric, whether you think it does harm, or whether you think it actually is good. It prevents urinary infections, or certainly it's more likely to. What do you think? Circumcision, male circumcision. Let's be clear on that. Is it cruel to circumcise babies? Court in Germany believes it's bodily harm. What do you think of that? Bodily harm that you are doing to your child if you circumcise them. Do you think that's true or not? Do you believe that it has hygienic health benefits? Or do you believe that those benefits are small in comparison to the pain? that the baby or the child will be going through. And then also the idea that you are imposing upon them a surgical act that they may in later life decide, too late it has to be said, that they didn't want. And perhaps even a religion that they didn't want. It does happen. Fazilat is a guest of mine this afternoon. Fazilat, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nihal. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for joining us and being a guest. Now, you've got three boys. I have, yes. All circumcised? Yes, alhamdulillah. At what age? Uh, the first one was just around the year, which was quite late. Mm. And the other two, uh, about two weeks old each. Well, they were twin boys, so they're two weeks old. Wow, a year and two weeks old. Yes. Okay. Not cruel? No. Um, I think I was more hurt, as I said, when I had the older one done because he was a little older, he understood, and I'm sure he felt the pain more as well because he was aware of everything around him by then. Mm, Whereas so the, the, oh, the younger twin boys, two weeks, they weren't even aware of what was going on, and within a week they were fine. Okay. And that, again, it was done by a practice, you know, a doctor who, who specialised in these. So it wasn't done, like, in a back street clinic or anything like that. OK, well, I'm glad to hear that it wasn't done in a back street clinic. I'm sure yeah. everyone listening is clear, is happy to hear that yeah. as well. Um, Alishba Zarmin is a guest of mine as well this afternoon. Alishba, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, and you? Good. Now, thank you for joining us, because you don't believe in infant circumcision, do you? No, I do not. Why not? Um, well, I have a few reasons, and I'll try to be as concise as possible. The first reason is that if you are trying to justify it as a religious practice, I have a contention with that, because what's not important is that the conclusion, the, um, the answer is not as important as how you get to the answer. So if you're trying to pass something as a, with a religious justification, then, for example, in Islam, I come from a Muslim background, I'm not a Muslim myself anymore, um, but if you're trying to, let's say, in Islam, a circumcision is mandatory. And uh, if you're saying that Islam does that, well, Islam also says to cut off the top of the hands of the thief. Islam also says to stone the adulterer. Islam, Islam says a lot of other things, too. So if you are trying to justify a violent act, and I do count circumcision as a violent act, in the name of culture and religion, I'm sorry, but that has no, um, that has no space in a secular society that is based on humanist values. Do you regard That's open do you regard open heart surgery as a violent act, Alish? No, I do not, because they're life saving act. Circumcision is an unnecessary. Well, okay, well then when then do you do, what about a what about a dentist removing a tooth then? That's not life saving. Is that a well, violent act? A child, 
Well, with circumcision, is the child given a, point, uh, given a choice? It's okay if you're an adult and if you're making that choice by yourself. But if an but it, infant who can't even speak and you're making that decision for him, how do you know that he's not gay? How do you know that he's not going to need that extra lubrication? How do you know that he's not going to be a monk and he's not even going to have FDS because he's going to have, he's, he's going he's gonna to observe uh, abstinence? Okay, so okay. Uh, Fazil- Fazilat. You cannot make these decisions. Okay, Fazilat, as a... As an adult, you cannot make this decision on behalf of a child. The child has to make this decision for himself when he becomes an adult. I understand that point of view, but the thing is that what people have to understand is that when a child is born in a Muslim or a Jewish home, the parents naturally feel and think that the child is going to follow the religion like everybody else. True, but there's no stipulation in Islam, to the best of my knowledge, um, on the timing of it. And a, a, our imam can, whereas in it, in, is, I think with the Jews, they're much more specific about the timing of it. No, in Islam there is. It's seven days. It's, uh, well, that's what the Jews say as well. Yeah, but the same, the same with, the, uh, with the Islamic faith as well, that within seven days is when you have the circumcision and the akika, the removal of the birth hair is removed as well. And then you have a massive meal, if it's, when, because it's a boy, you have a massive meal to, to celebrate that event. Uh, because, for example, for health reasons or whatever, we yeah, make appointments with doctors, so we do prolong that that time. But as I'm saying, uh, as a nat- as a parent, naturally we feel that our children will be raised as Muslims and will follow our faith. Later on in life, if they decide that they are they are not, that's up, of course up to them. But as far but it's as too late. Concerned, is it too late as far as a piece of their body is concerned? Isn't no, it? They no, can't get it back. No, they can't get it back, but it's not going to do them any harm because considering and just listening to you at the moment, I myself have been uh, investigating and Googling away and I can see the amount of good that is coming out from, being, from male circumcision. And this is what we are talking about, actually, is male circumcision, that there is a lot of good that is coming out. But I would like to take up a point of view that you pointed out regarding showers. I will take that up with you because... When you said that we're now living in the 21st century where we've got running water and shower and hygiene, if today, if our government still needs to put out ads for washing our hands after going to the toilet, it it still shows to you today that people are not following hygiene rules. Quite, but but, but at the Prophet's time, he didn't have those options. We do now have those options. The thing is... is So, so wait a minute, so wait a minute. At that time, the Prophet, the Prophet, in his wisdom said we should do this because there wasn't any options no, but no, you are not no, given you you are not given your three boys an option you've just no, told no, them to based on something that happened a, a thousand plus years ago no nihal the thing that you have to realize as well is that islam when it was done in, in the 1400 years ago it wasn't islam only for that time islam is an ongoing religion so islam that was practiced then is the islam that we But then if it's today. progressive as our imam yeah. has pointed out then yes. it would surely be able to evolve and understand the wisdom behind certain things is not appropriate or relevant to today's society. Well, if, you, if you're, if you're going to look at it that way, there are other, uh, other things that are happening in the Islamic state that you know, we are looking into, for example... Would you, would you be into stone in adulterers, for instance, as Elisha no, pointed out? That, 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 that's, that's in, we, we would consider that inhumane then and we could consider it inhumane but, right but now. But that was one of the... the the punishments that was kept for that side, which we have now progressed to and we, we look into. If you're going to look at it that way, the lady just mentioned regarding the removal of the hand or the fingers for thieving, today in the Arab world, at least, thank God, we don't have that much theft. It has prevented theft. So if you're going to compare it that way, yes, we may have progressed in certain circumstances. In certain circumstances, it has worked. But this regarding the health, it is today showing us after 1,400 years that both the Jewish and the Muslim faith had it right because it's preventing so many health issues. Okay, all right. You would have thought about 1,400 years ago. Okay, anonymously, um, someone has wrote, circumcision when done up to the age of six months is not painful. I can say that because one month ago I had my baby boy circumcised. He did not cry during the procedure or the healing period. Um, Yes, it is cruel. I remember the sound of screams and pain on my baby son's face. I went along with it because that's what was expected while married to my husband. Hmm, there you go. Isn't that interesting? Two texts back to back saying the complete opposite of each other. Jasminda, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nihal. Here to put a tiger amongst the pigeons, no doubt. Uh, well, first of all, I've just Googled and done a bit of research and uh, there's a Medical Centre that said there is no conclusive 
evidence whatsoever to suggest that anyone who is circumcised is protected but from HS, uh, HIV. It's just a myth. Uh, OK, uh, we, we need to make an important distinction here. Less likely to contract is not the same as protected. Exactly. And uh, I, no, but Adnan Rashid made that point. The imam said it doesn't protect, but you are less likely to contract it, uh, which is not the same no thing. research for it anyway. But anyway, um, these people, a lot of people, you know, who are saying we do it in the name of religion, obviously they believe their God is perfect. Um, are well, who doesn't believe their God is perfect? Are these people saying, these believers of God, that God made a mistake? He created males imperfectly that they have to go and then make uh, the, the, you know, the changes and remove the, uh, the foreskin. Yeah. The way we are born, Nihal, I believe, is the way that God intended us to be. And if God wanted males not to have a foreskin, I believe he would have made the arrangements. I mean, none of us would have had foreskin. Well, what, pres- right, what right yes. does another human being have, even if it is a parent, to decide for a newly born baby that cannot talk, that cannot think for itself, to decide that, right, I'm going to remove your foreskin? You know, and how does anybody know that the amount of pain that baby, that poor innocent child is feeling at that point? And but, it, but even the doctor who we had on, the medical doctor, yes. said that babies are less likely to get urinary tract infections if they Which are circumcised. Can be cured with antibiotics even no, if no, they got them. Okay, okay. But, but prevention, okay, prevention. Advantage? Medicine loves telling us about prevention. Eat healthily, don't smoke, etc., etc. Now we have a, a, a wisdom given 1,400 years ago, actually before that, because, of course, the Jews practised this before that. So for a millenn- two millennia, we've had something okay, that has said I'm that... I'm going to come back on that, Nihal. Go on. The, the reason that people first started circumcising others, were it was believed during about 1,400 years ago, because I read up on this, that at the time they thought that it increases sexual pleasure. It wasn't done because they thought that it was going to make somebody medically better. And number two, you, you're alluding to that doctor. The doctor also said that getting removing your foreskin reduces sexual sensation, reduces enjoyment of men's sexual pleasure. And number two, and this is what I've just but, read but on that would buy, But that would buy you know, into... Nihal, the but that would buy into temperance. The highest percentage, the largest percentage of medical procedures in the world at the moment, the largest growing medical procedures at the moment is the reattachment of foreskins. So why are all these people, all these men going out now, and you can research this for yourself, and having procedures done where they're having parts of their skin removed to create a foreskin. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. It's because the foreskin, Nihal, protects the penis, it protects the glands from dirt and urine deposits and other but they, um, but urinal... They, but, um, you argue, but equally, sex. people argue that said piece of skin actually keeps a lot of that stuff in. No, no, not if it's washed. Not if you teach your, your, your children hygiene from a young age. I mean, just like the doctor said, it protects you from um, a nappy rash or, your, you know, penis infections from nappies or even underwear. Sometimes people don't <laughs> you know, change their underwear for days or whatever. At least the foreskins, they're protecting the penis. You know, if, you, if, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're circumcised, just imagine all these areas in places like Bangladesh or Pakistan where people are so poor. I dread to think what uh, medical tools they're using to remove foreskin when their babies now, are born. Can I quickly OK, come in? yes, of course. Adnan Rashid, our imam. Jasmine, just stay with us. Okay, very quickly, the, the, the point of imperfection was a moot point because one can argue in a similar fashion about pubic hair, hair under the, the armpit, the clipping nails, let, the, let, 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 let your hair grow, let your nails grow, go, go with the nature if that's the way you want to argue, number one. Number two, with regards to pain, with regards to pain, let me finish quickly, wait, wait, wait. let me finish, let me finish. With regards to pain, why do, why do we cut the umbi- umbilical cord in that case? Leave the umbilical cord with the child and let him walk around with the placenta and let him grow up to an age where he, can, he or she can actually determine whether uh, he or she wants to be separated from that. Uh, but but Adnan Rash- Rashid, Adnan Rashid as, as you know, we're not medical doctors, but you, you know that it's very important when a baby is in the womb that the placenta, etc., etc., once the baby comes out into the world... This is to refute the point about pain. When people say, "Oh, no, quite," but I'm refuting the comparison. Child, child, child would feel the feel the pain when you're cutting the umbilical cord as well. So this logic goes to that as well. Number, no, no, and also coming to the issue of uh, which uh, the medical uh, research, uh, you know, contested by Jasminder. Is, is Jasminder, yes. Jasminder, yeah, Jasminder. If you, anyone, I invite anyone to just simply Google it. Just put circumcision in Google and read the medical articles. You will see a consensus, almost a consensus 
on the benefits of circumcision. And no one will come out and say that there is any harm. Hardly. And about this... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Adnan. Be, be, be very careful about that, because we've had a doctor already come on that said that. Of course, the doctor made a point about uh, less uh, sensation uh, pe- 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 with people who have circumcised. However, if you look at the research about this as well, it's inconclusive. There is no conclusive. This is the research where conclusion has, uh, haven't been withdrawn. Does it increase e- erectile dysfunction rates? Do you know that? It does. Were you aware of that? 13%. No, that, I mean, not. I'm, I haven't come across, according to my research, no, I haven't come across. Uh, right. This. Well, research can be subjective, can't it, Adnan? Okay, sure, sure. It can be. Yes, no. indeed. Yes. All right, Jasminda, would okay, you like to come back all, to our mind? First of all, that ridiculous point about cutting nails. Cutting one's nails, does, it does not... Okay, we, we can move on from that. All right, go on. Umbilical cord as well, I'll answer that. Even animals, you know, they, 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 you know, have babies, whatever, umbilical cord, that dissolves anyway. And yes, that was a good point, by the way. Rectal dis- dysfunction is increased by cutting the foreskin by 13 to 20%. And back to that hygiene point, if you don't have the foreskin to protect your penis, I don't want to get too... But it do, wait a minute, it does, it does make the point, wait a minute, it does make the point with... Erectile dysfunction, good grief, I didn't feel I'd be talking about this on a, on a Thursday afternoon. Adult circumcision has certain effect on erectile function. So it's saying adult circumcision does. I know, and Nihal, the other point I want to make is why can't... If, We're talking if, about if these infant. So, if these people are so strong in their belief, why can't they wait till the child reaches the age of 18 and he can... And, and, but isn't that crueler, Jasminda? A two-week-old baby is going to have no recollection of How this. How do you know, Nihal? You're not a two-week-old baby. You can't confirm that. No doctor in the world can confirm well, that. Well, you can. Well, i tell you how you can confirm it, Jasmine, oh, quite oh. easily. You ask an adult who's been circumcised as a baby how they feel about oh, yeah, it today. He's going to remember. He, uh, well, that's the, the, the point, that's isn't it, Jasmine? He doesn't, doesn't remember. A specific point in that child's life, you're subjecting it to pain. I know you've got kids as well. When a child is born, I can't, I've got children myself. I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't let anything hurt my child. Do, you know, well, when I, when we pierced our daughter's woman, ears. Woman in Nihal, even when my child had an injection, it, it, it hurt me. I don't know how these people can take their children and have them circumcised and sub- subject them to that much pain. Yes, but you just made the point that they don't remember. It doesn't matter. You might not remember the pain you felt when you were... Eight, I don't remember. Old, wait a minute. I don't remember. Listen. You still felt pain at the time, Nihal. But, it, OK, uh, for that, wait a minute. Woman, but, woman in Nihal. Yeah, go on. When I was nine years old, I fell off my bike, I busted my head open, had a few stitches. I don't remember the pain I felt, but I'm damn sure I, I felt pain at the time. My parents would have told me. Right, OK. I was okay. out in pain. Right, OK. OK, you remember that. No, and I don't you, and you, the pain I felt, but I remember I, I fell okay, off. Okay, but you have, a, you have a reaction to that based on, exper- Sally, sure based on experience. Based on experience. Doctors say that babies have a but reaction that, but to But by, by that rationale, then, you should encourage all women to have caesarean sections so that the baby goes through the least amount of stress as possible? Sure. Wouldn't yes, you, Jasmine? That's also a medical procedure, but no, 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 I, I'll, I'll come back on that. No, but that's natural birth. For, removing foreskin is not natural. A baby being born through a woman's vagina is natural, whereas having a foreskin removed is unnatural. You're going from natural to well, unnatural. Well, then, we huh? believe that removing foreskin is natural, just like removing it's not nails natural. And but how, how can it be natural, natural uh, Adnan? How can it be natural? And how can it be natural? Because, because just, just like removing wait, wait, nails, let Adnan answer. Unnecessary, unne- unnecessary excesses on the on, on body can be removed. We, some people, some people actually go. Uh, speaking uh, for women in particular, they go for labioplasty. Labioplasty, I mean, I don't want to go into that. You can go and do your research what labioplasty is because of uh, excessive skin. So, you see, some, this, is, this, this is how we argue that removing foreskin is absolutely natural, uh, as natural as removing nails and pubic hair. So there's no point. I mean, this but, is what but, the uh, prophet but, mentioned. But five things from nature. But it, it, it evolves, it, you know, a, a Muslim man is less likely to feel the pleasure of sexual intercourse than a non circum not a Muslim man, but sorry, a circumcised man, whether it be <laughs> Jewish or Muslim or indeed anyone who decides to get circumcised, is less likely to feel the full pleasure of sexual intercourse than okay. uh, someone who remains well, intact, as it were. I, I, I and you're have, making I that choice testimony. for someone. You're making that choice... I have a, I have a testimony to the contrary. I know a friend of mine who was Greek. Yeah, OK, all right. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, we could all say, you know, my mate down... Let me, let me give you an example. This is a testimony... Um, he, he, was, he was a non-Muslim, he was not circumcised, he embraced Islam when he was 23. He circumcised himself and he told me himself that his sexual life has improved. This is what his impression is. And again, to stress the point okay. that this Science is... Science seems research. to disagree with your friend. 
Science Sorry? does seem to disagree with your friend on this. OK. But, uh, but there you go. Uh, Mrs Steer... Uh, is uh, in America, a regular emailer to the show, so it's uh, nice to speak to you. Hello. Hi, Nicole. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Gosh, you're such a loyal listener to this, even though it's, what is it, seven in the morning or something, and nine in the morning? It's it's just going nine in the morning. Nine in the morning in the United States. So, Mrs. Steer, what do you think about this? Now, you're a Muslim woman and your husband is Christian, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you think about circumcision on infants? we had my son done when he was born, but he was two days old. Um, but it was done in hospital, and I was I was really apprehensive before. I was, you know, didn't really want to have it done because I didn't want to hurt my son. But because it was done in the hospital, I was far more comfortable with it. And that's the norm in the states. It's done in the hospital, right, by a medical before, professional. By medical medical professionals in a clean environment or as clean as possible to get. You know, so, uh, and then as well, the the doctors as well on all his checkups, they check that he's healing okay and, you know, they take an active interest in that. So that made things so much more easier. I think if we were back in the UK, I would have been far more apprehensive and maybe not even got it done because it's not done in a medical environment, not by a medical profession. Um, It's not monitored by, you know, the doctors or healthcare visitors or whoever. Right. So they don't really take an interest in that. Um. That's why I prefer it. And that's probably why I had it done. Right. Okay. You know, well, right. Here. So, and, and I don't really agree having it done when they have it done much later in life. That's that's true. Really, that is cruel. Uh, you know, when little boys, and I think they can be quite traumatised by it because it is such a big thing. And you know, it, they're awake, I think, as well, aren't they? So, oh. but when they're babies, they really they don't remember anything. They don't remember anything until they're about a year old. They don't have any hmm. memories. I mean, thank you, Mrs. Steer. Uh, Jasminda, are you equally against um, babies having their ears pierced? No, I just want to make a quick point. I've just Googled this as well. There are hundreds, thousands of males dying every year in Africa, Indonesia, Pakistan, India and Afghanistan who are circumcised in an unhygienic way in the back streets. Well, yes, okay. and no, and no one's encouraging that. No, no, it's, all, no yes, it's, it's happening, though, Nihal. People are being circumcised because they're following religion. OK, OK. Jasminda, uh, Jasminda, uh, uh, I think this... 1,600 years ago. No, it's a very important point. Um, Adnan Rashid, if there is a belief, Adnan Rashid, that this is compulsory, then in those countries that Jasminda is talking about in the developing world, which don't have the same sanitation standards that we have here in the West, then sure. that is a real issue, isn't it, for Muslims? Because people are being mutilated in some instances by underqualified, if indeed qualified at all, people who are performing minor surgical procedures on children. Now, this is something surely as a religion collectively, whether it be Jewish or Islam, uh, has to be looked at, doesn't it? That's a valid point. First of all, I have to contest the the exaggerated uh, number quoted by Jasminder. I think Jasminder is looking at... Well, 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 look, if if one child dies, then that is... Websites, possibly. Uh, what I have to say, what I have to say... Well, he, this, he does the same searches is, that you do. My research, according to my research, one in every 100,000 children dies because of this issue one and this this is this is less than this is much 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 less than other problems we have and where, where is that research from adnan what where is that from is that from again if you want yeah, to dig out the, the website, a medical website I can, uh, yeah but i mean it's not it's not from unicef or one of these global organizations that's no, well recognized no. is if it if you want to talk about unicef the okay. united nations program united nation um aids program is actually promoting circumcision in africa if you, you don't believe me, go and check it out. Well, I, I've been told that the World Health Organization is... Alishba, Alishba, come in. Alishba, come in. Yes. Okay, so if you're talking about Africa, I have read that study. First of all, AIDS is a big issue in Africa anyway. It's recommended. Voluntary circumcision. Infant circumcision is not recommended. That's the first issue. So you might want to check your medical research because I hear a lot of confirmation bias here. Uh, second point was about, I, I would like to go back to the um, initial reasons why, ma- uh, why circumcision started. It was, first of all, to discourage masturbation. Uh, second of all, if you're talking about, um, you were talking about also, uh, you talking about that uh, foreskin does not have any purpose. Yes, it does. 90% of your nerve endings are actually in the foreskin. And if you are talking about that anecdotal um, argument that the imam was making about, oh, my friend said that it's uh, my sexual life my, has improved. Improved does not mean that it's more pleasurable. Improved means because there is less sensation, 
partially because the skin is more exposed now, you can last longer, but that doesn't mean that it's more pleasurable well, or you can have more sensation. So you really have to do your research and I about that. penile anatomy. Let me finish. You have to do your research about penile anatomy because foreskin is not taught as part of anatomy. And you have to teach that. You have to teach what exactly um, the, the role that uh, foreskin plays in um Okay, Alicia, are you denying that's, the fact um, that that's, that's, I have another point. If you're talking about urinary tract infection in children, the biggest problem is that um, parents are not taught that you are not supposed to retract the foreskin when, when the child is very young because it's attached to your penis. And if you do that, then that causes infection. It's not the foreskin itself that causes infection. What do you do? You rinse the penis of the child. You rinse okay, the penis of the, the, of the infant. Well, so if you are not going to give proper sexual um, education, these problems are going to arise. And how are you going to protect, protect yourself from HIV? Well, condoms. That's one thing. Also, U.S., as an industrial nation, and I, I think I said that before, has the highest level of uh, um, male circumcision and it also has highest level of HIV. So I'm sorry, but you are not making a substantiated claim right now, and it sounds very much like confirmation bias. And that, that, that has okay. No let, let's let Adnan Rashid come okay. back. Go on. First of all, uh, to to refute all the points made by Alicia uh, in a humble manner, I would suggest to anyone to go and carry out uh, superficial research. You don't even have to go into medical journals for this year. Just carry out Ooh. some research on medical websites with regards to circumcision and if 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 number one if circumcision does not prevent against hiv number two if it does not pre uh, prevent against penile uh, cancer if it does not help women do, protect do, wait, wait, from wait, wait. cervical cancer let me let me finish let me no, finish. i just want I actually wait a minute i just want to back you up because the world health organization and unaid un aid uh, has said it should circumcision should be added to current interventions to reduce the spread of hiv and they actually believe that it halves it could up to halve uh, the rates. That's yes. what it's. Uh, that's what it's actually yes. saying. So, so I don't know where Alicia. It halved the rate of HIV from. infection in heterosexual yeah, men. I, I don't know what research is they are reading. It is very, very clear, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in, in medical uh, research, that circumcision has far more benefits than it, it has lost. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for that.